guys and welcome back to another video so i decided to change up the intro a little bit and show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes of what i do kind of like prior to painting because today's video we are going to be trying out two like two new products i guess and both of these products are actually from magic fly and i have worked with them in the past and i've reviewed i think last time was a jelly gouache set and a watercolor palette now to your surprise maybe you're probably like why are you doing another watercolor set to review now this one and the other one are different so both of them did come with 48 colors but this one is more like a travel set so if you're out and about or you want to do like planner sketching or you're traveling or maybe you just like move locations more frequently for whatever reason maybe you're heading to classes or something like of that sort a travel set is a little bit more easier to use when you're on the go so as you can see it comes with 48 colors it comes with two little sponges on the very side and then it comes with two water brushes now all these are going to help aid you with the idea of being able to take your palette on the go without having to need to bring like jars or paper towels or towels or cloth or anything like that while you're painting now i'm gonna hopefully insert footage because for some reason my dumb brain didn't include this so the little tray that comes out and it has like little legs and it can insert itself back into those little slots or like those little holes now um when you're out and about um sometimes if you don't have a desk or a surface to work on this case does have a little thumb hole or like a thumb grip thing underneath so you can stick your thumb in there and kind of hold your uh, painting tray palette thing as in, like an actual palette and you can actually stick the tray um, into the little holes and you can make kind of like a different configuration of how you want your palette to be. Another thing that I really like um, is that these little paint cakes uh, paint pans I guess these little half pans are actually all separated into groups of six and each of them individually can pop out as well so you can replace them with half pans and you can easily refill them if you need to or um, rearrange them to fit your workflow um, for the sake of the video I actually didn't rearrange them I thought it would take a little bit too much time and to rack my brain on how do I want to sort the whole palette because sometimes I sort it and then it's not ideal to how I work so yeah um it does come with a little paint sheet as well so or not paint sheet a color swatch sheet um this one didn't come with a paper or anything for you to swatch your own colors but it does have a little thing to help you give kind of reference now I'm going to get into the actual speed painting portion and I'll talk a little bit more about um, the whole idea of why I wanted to use this palette and what it's great for and my experience working on it as I did two illustrations with it okay so on to the very first drawing so I did do the line art with um, a ballpoint pen just because I know that I wanted to try using the water brush once again and I wanted to have a clear foundation of where I'm going to be putting like um, the lines and where the forms are before I accidentally kind of like scrub away my sketch and stuff so the reason why I don't really like using the water brush and the reason why it's included in the set and usually like a lot of watercolor sets that are advertised as like a travel set um, is because you have a source of water basically always with you and you're able to kind of like clean your brush but also like wet your paint at the same time so you can see that the way i'm cleaning my brush is that i'm dabbing it onto the sponge on the my left but it's on the right of the palette um, and when you're on the go usually you're not going to carry around like paper towels i know some people use like old rags or cloths or old towels and they use it for like to absorb pigments or to clean your brushes after you basically douse them in water um, but having the water brush is definitely more convenient but the reason why I don't really like using it in a normal setting where I'm like perched at my desk I have access to water normal brushes or like even just like paper towels and stuff is because because it's constantly dispensing water it's harder for me to have water control versus like pigment not versus pigment water to pigment ratio water to paint ratio is harder for me to control and for me i like having the ability to kind of change that ratio at will but 
having the brush constantly kind of like dispense water or keeping the brush quite moist it's hard for me to tell until i place it on the paper and i know this is more like user error it's nothing to do with the product itself there's a lot of artists that i really like that are able to use it really nicely and use it really well i know some people who use it for more of like realistic painting i've seen people use it for plain air and that's another grape i have i don't know if you saw that um because of my inexperience of using this pro like this water brush, I accidentally, I don't know if I was like pointing the brush directly downwards or if I was squeezing the barrel, but I, it kind of like blotched onto his face. So other than it being a really cool travel set and very like, I feel it's like easy to use, many colors are available and it's quite actually affordable even compared to my previous set. So I, my very first, watercolor set was actually a i think it's a knockoff version of a koi watercolor travel set and it had like 12 colors and this one actually is very reminiscent of it except for it's at a much larger scale i like the setup of it more and it's kind of like the reason why i wanted to try it out because i felt like I wanted to try another set that kind of resembled my very first watercolor set. So this is great for novices or even like intermediate artists like myself or even people who just want to replenish their watercolor set. So I know the other session just ended super abruptly, but I wanted to show you guys this first, which is the second product that I'm going to be showing you guys, which is the Magicfly Dual Tip Brush Pens. And they're dual tip because the larger side, they're kind of like beveled a little bit, like it's like a thicker side and a thinner side. So the thicker side does have like a brush tip, which is great for thick and thin lines or for doodling, for handwriting, for calligraphy, anything of those sorts. And then the, or hand lettering, I guess that's what it's called, not handwriting, hand lettering. And then the thinner side is actually a fine liner, which kind of has like a more sturdy or harder nib and it's really thin and kind of more of like consistent lines, which is really nice. And I think it's just great to have like kind of like a two-in-one marker. I've had like similar markers in the past. I never really had ones that were water-based markers that had a brush and then like a fine liner. I've always had like a brush and like some kind of bullet nib and like, I don't know. I just never gravitated towards using like the bullet nib that much, but I think a fine liner kind of has a little bit more of a use for me just because like i always find bullet nibs a little bit too big so fine liner kind of works out a little bit better for me so this does have a hundred colors which is plenty um and a large variety i did do a little bit of swatching i don't really remember where i inserted this in but i the color range is perfect for people who want a vast like hue range i think which is great because there's like many different blues and yellows and greens i think there's a good amount of each different color that they have so if you're using this um as your main coloring tool it might be a little bit difficult unless you decide to water them down which i'll get into a little bit later but the color range kind of leans towards having very few kind of like pastel colors mostly mid-tone and then some really dark colors so most of the colors do fall into the mid-tone range which i'm totally fine with because i'm going to be using these either as a fine liner to outline like drawings or doodles or paintings or i'm going to be using them just for doodling needs um, so I have two pieces of watercolor paper here. One is my Strathmore 500 series and then the other one I do not know where I got it from. It's probably from my university store way back then. Um, but I want to show you guys that because these are water-based markers, you can definitely kind of like dilute them and treat them like watercolor. So the kind of like little gray and teal splotch that I have on the upper left on the left hand paper was my first attempt and you can see like the different blooming and like kind of the blending and kind of the outline that you get and then everything on the right side paper is also with the same technique so i'm putting down these little swatches of color i'm taking one of the magic fly brushes from my previous set actually not the one that we saw today and i wanted to see how much of the lines kind of remain from the pen itself because i know a lot of water-based markers actually don't like fully blend out and they always leave like a little streak or anything but 
I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in the other piece. This one blended out so easily on these two types of paper, but the paper that I decide to use today in the next drawing that you're going to see, for some reason just sucked up the pigment so much that I couldn't budge it and it was almost like impossible to work on. So we'll take a little glimpse of that and then we'll move on to one more attempt where I tried a different piece of paper and we'll head into kind of like the doodling session and one more painting session. Okay, so uh, if you remember from the very beginning of this video, there was like two little sketches that I had printed out and the left sketch was actually of my new OC, which you can see right here. I decided to do the sketch with just normal graphite which is kind of a mistake it kind of smudged everywhere and I'm going to show you guys kind of like little snippets of me attempting to blend out the marker on watercolor paper now this is like I think this is the B company watercolor paper I don't really remember if not it's the Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper and you should have been able to see that it was hard for me to blend out the markers on the watercolor paper because it was the watercolor paper was really like grabbing onto the marker pigment the attempt here which i decided to find similar paper to what i did my swatches on which that's what you should do um if you're testing out any medium for the first time or any products or anything you should try to match it um, so you don't have those struggles and those kinds of surprises um, and as you can see it was easier for me to blend out the colors and seamlessly kind of like blend them out a little bit and kind of get rid of any lines i was able to layer back the gray back into his hair and blend it out once again with water much more easier because the pigments of the marker kind of sits on the surface of this paper rather than being immediately sucked in so it gave me a lot of time for me to be able to push around the pigments with water now another way to kind of use these markers which i didn't really show but i've done this in the past and i've seen other people do this you can kind of like take a piece of like maybe a plastic sleeve a piece of acetate or even like scotch tape place it into your sketchbook and just scribble a little bit of the marker on there and save it kind of for future use and you can take like a water brush and just like pick up a little bit of that pigment and put it into your sketch it's just a way for you to kind of like store colors in your sketchbook in a neat way um, if you don't want to carry around like a bazillion pens um, but yeah so I decided to do the line work with the fine liner side and there's kind of like the final result now I kind of wanted to redeem the last two weeks where it was kind of like absent of a sketchbook doodles video, hence why this video is so dang long. Um, this portion will be similar to how I do my sketchbook doodles, so I decided to take out my current notebook sketchbook thing and do a little bit of doodling. I think I doodled Jonghan for a little bit. These were done like a few days ago, so I don't remember it entirely, but I'm doing the sketch in the pilot color. You know as usual i decided to pick out three colors so i like to pick out usually two colors tends to be one warmer one cooler or just one lighter and a mid-tone color and because i knew i wanted to do the line work with a fine liner um, from the set i decided to pick something a little bit more bold and a little bit more dark so it could stand out and you can see i'm just kind of like almost color blocking in um, different elements of his jacket. I'm trying to alternate like alternate between his hair color and his eye color And then we're going in with the fine liner side Which I'm using kind of like a navy blue or an ultramarine color to do the outlines I think it just looks a little bit cuter compared to using just like dark void of black i guess especially if you're doing something a little bit more colorful this is kind of nice to do and because you have a full range of 100 colors there's a lot for you to choose from um i decided to go with a yellow and kind of like a teal color almost a turquoise um greenish color this time just because i wanted to pick something a little bit more vibrant and i really like this yellow it's kind of more of a buttery pastel not quite pastel i guess kind of color it just looked really soft and kind of like creamy-ish and yeah i just thought it looked kind of cute with more of a cooler toned color like this greenish teal color turquoise whatever you want to call it and yeah so that's basically how i'm going to be treating this little doodling session and usually if i am keeping things quite simple i will take the line work a little bit 
further and in this case I tried to do like the little seams I added a little bit of shadow so I can create a little bit of depth some of the wrinkles or any kind of like I don't know anything part of the clothing that I could kind of flesh out a little bit to give it a little bit more visual interest would have helped so yeah I did kind of little hatching and then I did some extra light lines little dots and everything to kind of make texture so yeah, I pretty much do that for the entire session, which is going to be the kind of like sketchbook doodle session. Then we'll move on to the watercoloring portion, which I I actually really liked. I really I really like using the fine liners along with these markers. I think it's really nice to have something that complements so nicely. But also, I think both of these products are great for people who want to get into maybe a specific kind of look or you want to try a different kind of medium for the first time because of how affordable they are so i mentioned earlier that the main reason why i wanted to use that watercolor set was because it's reminiscent of my very first watercolor set so before i like got really into watercolors and i kind of like delved deeper into wanting to do more like semi-realism or realism or taking it as a medium that I wanted to do like for my senior year in uni I needed a place to start so I've always seen like a lot of artists that I really like and I realized a lot of the ones that I liked did watercolor they did really beautiful like watercolor illustrations um a lot of the manga artists that I used to follow or like even like covers of manga a lot of them color either with Copics or like alcohol markers or they would color with watercolor. So I really love like kind of like that light airy aesthetic. So I wanted to give it a go and my very first watercolor set was like they said like kind of like that knockoff Koi set. And even for me, like I think I got it either at the very end of high school or the beginning of uni is when I actually just bought it for more of like casual use but it felt expensive at the time because this palette's like the size of my fist and I think it was close to $30 if not like it was $30 and I just wasn't sure if I wanted to invest into it because I also had to buy brushes, I had to buy paper, the palette was I felt was expensive at the time so I don't know it just for me at the time it didn't feel worth it but seeing companies like Magicfly being able to make products more affordable but also on a scale that I feel like is more approachable for people who want to start out and I feel like part of the product being more approachable is one the immense amount of color like I think a lot of people will find comfort in finding something that's familiar and being have like having such a large color range you don't have to use the whole entire rainbow to use a product right you can if you see colors that you're familiar with then you can kind of like get yourself back into the groove get yourself a little bit comfortable then you can kind of like expand and try stuff that is a little bit out of your comfort zone and having that range is just kind of nice but also just like the price point i think is also something that makes it super approachable because you're not gonna break your bank um trying out watercolors because I don't know, I think it's like either the set or the previous set, I think we're both good for people who want to try out watercolor. So for this set, you would just mostly have to buy paper, but like even for me, I love using watercolor even in this notebook. It's a fun way to add color, it has a cool texture. Um, yeah, so like if you're trying out a new product, there is no need to go all out. There's more affordable options out there and they have really nice quality. I think this one is close to being, not close to being, it is. It's more like student quality. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in terms of when we get to the painting portion because I did mention that I did notice kind of a difference between the like this 48 color set of watercolor and the previous one that I tried. Um, but yeah, let's just enjoy the rest of the, kind of like this more sketchbook doodle-esque kind of portion of the video. I'm just having fun, um, kind of like doodling, recording some stuff of things that happened. Jonghan's had like, Jonghan had some really cute outfits that I wanted to doodle. I also had a few screenshots from when he was live on VLive and he's just munching and chatting and stuff. So I wanted to include those into there as well. And I thought it just looked really cute. Um, 
And I think the bottom one, or like the most right doodle, is more like... From... His Instagram post, I think? But yeah, I kind of just wanted to insert this because this is how I usually use my water-based markers. I just like using them to kind of like, kind of like color block if I can. And then it's just a great way to make like an entire spread. If you care about maybe aesthetics, you can kind of make a color combination like I did. You can just pick maybe two to three colors, doodle in those colors and kind of have a really cute little spread. Um, otherwise, it's just a quick way to record stuff. So I can imagine people doing gestures with the brush pen portion of the dual end brush pens. I don't know why I made that so complicated to say, but then you can go in and kind of refine your figures and stuff using the fine liners. So it's like a great um, product that you can have versatility in. I think that's great. Like I said, there's people who really love to do hand lettering and I don't know. I would really like to learn more about hand lettering in the future maybe because I've seen people do like the thick lines with kind of like a lighter color and then you do like a thinner line with a darker color and they kind of like do the same kind of motion it looks really cool when it's overlapped I don't know what I'm talking about um but yeah that's this session for today just for Jonghan's with a cute yellow and green and navy colors so on to the next session, which is a watercolor painting session. I am trying my best to get myself back into the groove of painting because I really want to do more painting. I just don't have the time to sit down for several hours and commit to a piece right now. So once I find the time, I'll do that. Um, wow, I'm just really fanning that page. Um, so this one is actually of 17th June. I just wanted to do some like doodle something very quick and I wanted it to be something that I wouldn't have to worry too much about color. So I picked one of June where he's wearing majority white and then he has a bright red scarf. If you're a fan of 17, you've probably seen this. I've already talked about this photo shoot before too on Instagram because it's really pretty and June's is very photogenic anyways. So yeah, why not? So... Okay, so let's talk about the paints. So I keep saying, so what am I doing? The paint, the difference between the two paint sets. We have the 48 paint set that I had in the kind of like black tin. And then you have the 48 travel set in the white plastic container uh, palette thing. So one thing that I noticed when I was doing the Xing Chou painting, which was a little bit weird. Some of the pigments looked like they had almost like glitter or some kind of pigment that was producing something very shiny um that wasn't like consistent if that makes sense it looks speckled and shiny so i feel like it looks like glitter and i was trying to look at the color sheet to see if there's any metallic colors or any kind of like um i guess metallic is like the only way to kind of describe it but there wasn't so i don't know if i was tripping or you know if <laughs> if it was supposed to be like that um but when i was using it on june i don't know if it's because i didn't use like the turquoisey blue color it wasn't present in this piece so i don't know what's going on but the thing that i noticed the most was actually the cake pans or the half pans itself so i did the xing chou piece a couple of days ago and i noticed that when i used it the day when i painted june which is this one, there's a lot more cracking and almost like flaking of the paint compared to my other set, which makes me feel like that this one has a little bit more fillers into the paint, which I don't think is like detrimental and nor will a lot of people notice unless you've used several different kinds of paints before. And there's nothing wrong with watercolor companies or people who make watercolors to use a lot of fillers. It's a way to make paints more affordable and these still function really nicely like the way you can blend the colors out the paints also flow nicely into one another you can seamlessly blend colors it works really nicely and i had no issues working on it so or working with it so i don't think that was an issue um but yeah it's like more filler is quite common and a lot more like affordable or um yeah just like more affordable watercolor sets have more filler it's just like kind of like a binder and because there's less pigments present is what makes it more affordable basically so if you're 
starting off with watercolor and or like you're wanting to start off with watercolor there's no need to like splurge on like let's say daniel smith paints or even like holbein's holbein's can get pricey too because they're like five dollars per tube or even like eight dollars per tube which gets really pricey if you think about it because if this one's like closer to 25 to 30 range um just buying five tubes of holbein is already more or just the same amount of the 48 color set that you have uh, but yeah, I had no issues. It, the paint's not chalky either, which usually is a red flag for me if it's chalky. I don't really like chalky paint. Um, but when painting with this paint, I could tell that there is a little bit more filler. Um, but it's not like, like I said, it's not that big of an issue. It's like if it's still usable without like any issues, I guess. There, there was like a paint palette that I've used in the past like a long time ago and it was like super chalky um and the paint wouldn't like flow to one another like you weren't able to get um two different colors to kind of like if they were both wet on wet and you can't get them to blend that's usually a problem where there's like too much filler so this one didn't have that issue so it's definitely fine and you can see how vibrant the color is so it's not like the color payoff was sacrificed so yeah, I think if you're interested in getting some like some kind of water color paint palette, I think this one or the previous set that I've reviewed um, on this channel is a good viable option. You can see that it layers quite easily. I do think this paint um, lifts just a little bit more compared to the other one. So yeah, it might be also just the paper type because I think before I was using the Magic Fly paper along with the magic fly paints but this one i'm using my strathmore 400 series paints or not paints my strathmore 400 series paper along with these paints and i'm just not sure if maybe the combination is causing it to lift but yeah it's not too much of an issue like all of these things that i talk about that might seem like issues aren't like red flags for me they're just like nitpicky things if i had to pick something like that was a, like a con for these products because honestly these work really well the color payoff is really nice everything feels not cheap like things feel of good quality even like the water brush felt nice it didn't leak at all i didn't talk about that it didn't leak the sponges you can also i'll probably leave notes throughout this video because this is incredibly long and i didn't realize how long it was so i'll make sure to leave notes just in case if i miss saying things but if you're just listening to the audio version um if you're using that palette like the current palette in this video the sponges after maybe you come back from your travels or whatever or, or you have access to a sink you can just run it back under the water and just wash your sponge and it'll get a lot of the pigments out and you can just reuse it again so that's another way you can just keep reusing the sponges which is great i decided to use the fine liners to do the line work now the thing i like about these fine liners with these watercolor or just like with watercolor in general it gives me similar a similar look to if I was to line carefully with a brush because of how clean and thin it is and but this one's a little bit more consistent which is kind of nice my kind of like hand pressure recently I feel like has been a little bit heavy-handed so um, having these kinds of pens to do the line work really cleanly with thin lines but it stands out nicely is really nice I use black for the inside portion of his hair i kind of use a dark brown for any of the hair that was facing either towards the right side which has a little bit more light or closer to his face like where his bangs are so it doesn't become too piercing i kind of use like more of a a sienna brown can you guys not tell my brain is like completely obliterated right now um yeah, I used like a warmer brown for his face, like facial features, and then I used a dark purple for the scarf because I have a lot of purple shadows in here. I probably could have got away with a dark red for the inner lining of the scarf or the, the little ribbing. And I decided to use purple for the rest, so I used it for his sleeves. I also used it for the eyes as well. And I think it just makes the illustration look a lot cleaner, having the lines and stuff. And it does look more like 
how I would do it if I did it with a brush. So that's kind of a plus. It's kind of a faster method. So yeah, and I think it looks great. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's really long video and my very rambly self. I'll make sure to include a bunch of notes and stuff on the video so you guys are more familiar with the product and stuff. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!